What is going on guys? I know it's been a while since the last video I uploaded, but today is going to be an interesting video to make up for that. For $8, I'm going to show you guys how to install wireless charging in your E90. So what are we doing today, Max? Alright guys, so like you just said, we bought the $8 wireless charger. Look at this guys. Wireless charging for $8. Now I know what you guys are saying, but Gito, that's the cheap one that just goes to your windshield. But no. We're gonna show you guys how to modify this so it looks stock in your E90. You want a G20 2020 BMW feature in your 2009 E90? We're gonna show you how. Right here is where we're gonna be installing it. All right guys, so this is the box, what it looked like right here. Basically, I was at Walmart, we came across the clearance section and this was in there for only $8. So I figured why not take this apart and see how we can modify it so it fits OEM to the car. When you guys open it up, you're gonna be greeted with all this stuff. I already took everything apart, but I'm gonna show you guys anyways. Yeah, I walked inside the house, this dude had like a kitchen knife and was like tearing it apart. Let me see what you have! I'm going! No! So all these little accessories that it comes with, you can throw that out, you're not gonna need that. And this is the actual pad itself. I basically just with a knife just went around it and pried it open and was able to tear it apart and once you have it apart you're gonna have basically the board where you plug it in through micro usb and then your coil that's probably gonna be one of the hardest parts about this is just prying that case open to get to this but once you have that this is all you need basically it's just the coil and then the board and it just plugs in through usb the plan is we're gonna with a trim removal tool is we're gonna pry out the center console right here and we're gonna through some way pry through tape or some glue and we're gonna use some adhesive to glue this to the bottom of this mat right here and we're gonna be running the micro USB cable underneath the center console so it reaches in here where we can plug it in through the cigarette outlet through the USB outlet I'm gonna get a trim pry tool right now and then I'll get back to you guys but Gito you use the cigarette outlet to light your cigarettes what yeah, a, but I have another one. Also, while we're doing it, we might as well take off the shifting knob and put on an M Sport shifting knob. Not to mention, we're just gonna take all this off, basically, just put the M Sport. Once we have wireless charging too, we might be adding Apple CarPlay in a later oh video. Oh my goodness. Not this video though, in a later video. Let's see if we can actually get wireless charging first. So uh, I'm gonna get that uh, plastic trim tool first and I'll get back to you guys. I know Gito's running out of ideas. All right guys, next we're gonna be deciding if we want wheel hubs on our wheels. Now, this has been very debatable and so we made the entire episode dedicated to wheel I Couldn't find my pry tool, but just a regular like butter knife and then like a little towel to put over it should work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work my way around so I can remove this trim. I'll be showing you guys how I do it too, but just with your pry tool or if you have a butter knife, something that's not too sharp that's gonna damage your trim. And then of course, just wrap it inside like a little towel like this, it should work fine. So I think it's easier if you just start from this side of the console, slide it in, and you can already see. Now, next what you're gonna do, and you're gonna wanna take this knob off. And the way you take the knob off, is just sliding it upward. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. All right, so the next step after you guys have removed your shift knob is going to be to remove the actual shift boot. And this thing just snaps up out of place. So it would be good if you guys removed your center trim first, that way you can lift it up like this. And then from underneath the trim, push upward like this. As you can see, I'm kind of bringing it upward like that. Once you guys have that out, there's a blue wire underneath right here. Go ahead and remove that. And there's another one over here too. So go ahead and remove those two wires and then you'll be able to fully take this guy off. Once you have that out, you should now be able to remove the trim. 
the iDrive controller will still be connected, but you have enough flex in the cable that you shouldn't have to remove it. So now that we have everything removed, I can show you guys what I meant. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and glue this on right here like so. That way when I set my phone inside this cradle, it's close enough to the coils that it will start to charge it. And then I'm going to run a micro USB cable from, from the coils all the way underneath the center console, underneath here, into here, and then straight into my USB outlet right here. So it should look completely OEM. You shouldn't be able to see any wires. Everything should be in completely invisible like wireless charging came from factory. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some glue. All right guys, so after doing a bit of testing, having the coil lined up like that, so the top part hits the second knob from the bottom, makes it so that it charges directly when you put it on top. All right, so now that you guys know where to install it from, again, you want the top of the wireless charging coil to hit that second knob right there on the bottom. If you have it lined up there, then when you set your phone down in this dock, it will charge automatically. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put uh, some super glue right here, right here, right here, and right here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and set it on the bottom over here. So I'm gonna set you guys up so you guys can see. All right guys, so I have the charging coil set where it needs to be. I uh, dab super glue all around the perimeter of the coil and I have it set like how I told you guys where the top coil is sitting at the second notch from bottom in the tray. So I'm gonna let that sit for 30 minutes and then I'll get back to you guys. Uh, I was noticing that the pad was starting to lift up a bit. So what I did was I just duct taped it. It should look completely OEM. So it sits completely flat and it has a tight finish. So I'm gonna let this sit with the super glue for about 30 minutes and then I'll get back to you guys. All right guys, so it's been about 20 minutes now since this thing has cured. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to leave the tape on just as a precaution, like a secondary backup, but it is super glued on. It has been about 20 minutes now. So I'm gonna go ahead and put everything back and test it out real quick. Oh, look who we got. A soldering kit, uh, a soldering kit, yeah, whatever it's called. Gito, show him the piece. Gito broke it. So, okay, when you're taking it apart, do not, I'm saying, do not hit the charger piece or else it's all over. You got to spend another eight bucks on another wireless charging kit. So, as long as you don't break the charging point, this was a success. I can make this work still. Somehow Gito believes in fairy tale, but Gito. And he broke a wireless charger. Beep. 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 Uh, Gito checking in on the patient, how he's doing. How's he doing, Gito? So the clip that holds the micro USB in broke off. So I'm holding the contacts on with just super glue. And I'm hoping that this will hold it. So far, we're getting a steady light, and I'm hoping not to lose it. 80 beats per minute. Um, so we'll see if this works or not. Bro, he gives the nurses look. Wait, look back. <laughs> I'm just hoping that it comes through. All right, so I just traded posts with Max now. He's taking the second shift on holding down the contacts. Uh, he's at a steady rate, 76 over 160. Uh, we should keep it the whole time. Okay, if you guys give us 10 likes, we will do an M Sport uh, gear shifter. We will. 10 likes. I don't see what the point of the gear shifter is, but okay. Get, yeah. No, 15. 10 likes, I get that already on the daily. 15 likes. 15. Give us 15 and we'll change out the... Uh... Hey. Come on, we're running on borrowed time here, guys. Get the paddles ready! It's good. All right, we have a hot glue gun. We're gonna hot glue it, see if that works. Shoot, no. We lost it. Another patient gone. All right guys, uh, it is now a couple of days later. Uh, it turned out 
the connection for the micro USB broke off the main board. So I'm heading down to uh, Harbor Freight right now and I'm going to pick up a soldering iron and we're gonna attempt to solder the connections back on from the micro USB cable to the board. And this is actually my first time soldering so uh, I don't know how it's gonna come out but I'm gonna show you guys what I'm doing and how I do it and you're also gonna see the results. So let's go pick up a soldering iron and see if we can solder uh, back on the micro USB cable to the board. So uh, let's head down there right now. All right guys, so I just came back from Harbor Freight right now. Uh, picked up some picked up some soldering iron stuff. Uh, all this was like 10 bucks at Harbor Freight. Uh, I was able to pick up a 30 watt, 120 volt soldering iron and then some lead free rosin core solder. So, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use this to solder back on the micro USB connection to the board. All right guys, uh, I just wanna give you an update on what happened. So basically, the connector, the micro USB connector on the wireless charger snapped off because I wasn't very gentle with it. If you're smart, unlike me, this will not happen to you and you will be able to use the original connection that came with the charging pad. So be gentle with the micro USB connector because it is very fragile. So be gentle with it. If you're slow and you're careful when opening up the wireless charger, the, uh, the connection port shouldn't come off. It's only if you're opening it up quick and fast like how I did that you risk damaging the connector port. So that's why I had to go back to Walmart and get another wireless charging pad. So it's still the original price, it's still $8. It's still those prices if you're careful when opening up the wireless charging pad. So a warning, be careful, go slow when opening it up and you should be fine. So I'm heading back to the house right now and we're gonna get back on I'm working on the center console. So uh, I'll see you guys then. All right guys, so what I did was I have it uh, super glued around the perimeter on the bottom of this and I just tied it down with some duct tape. That way uh, it will allow the surface area to hold on to this surface a lot longer. So with the duct tape holding the super glue in place, uh, this should be completely dry within half an hour. Uh, this is how I'm gonna have the cable routed going from here uh, tucked in here going just along the perimeter uh, and then just making sure that that's not going to get in the way of any of these sockets right here so now i'm going to go ahead and uh, snap this back into place the center console snap back into place just make sure that these wires are not going to be uh, conflicting with anything run it all the way through and pull it out through this hole right here once you have it pulled out through this hole right here you can go ahead and plug it into your usb socket right here and simply put this guy back like so and boom you have a pretty much oem fit finish right there and the same is true about this cover right here once you put it back you can't even tell that you have anything there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put back on the center trim uh, for the shifter. Make sure you reconnect those two cables, these two right here. And also make sure to reconnect your iDrive knob. Uh, I did not do that, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. Uh, and then I'll get back to you guys. <laughs> All right guys, this is the moment of truth right here. We have everything all put back. You can't even tell there is nothing installed over here. Make sure you route your cable underneath these grooves right here. It's all there too. That is also built in. Boom, put these two in the corner right there. Uh, so just a quick note guys, to make this even more flush, once you have the wireless charger in place, it has a little nub to that goes into the hole in the center console, but it touches the wireless charger, so it kind of creates a little bit of a gap. So just shave it off. I use this little tool right here to shave it off, and once you have that shaved off, it'll be nice and flush against your center console. Grab your cover, and boom, OEM finish. So now, let's 
go ahead and put the phone down. Bam, guys. Wireless charging in a 10-year-old car. Dang. I didn't know it would be this cool, actually. You don't, I'm proud of myself. So on now when you just put your phone there. Boom, let's do that again. Wirelessly charging. Uh, so that's how you guys install wireless charging in your BMW E90. Uh, this might apply to other models, but specifically the E90 model. Uh, so now you guys know how to do it for only, uh, I think it was $8. Like I said, I only had to buy the other one because the wireless charging port failed on on the first one, but for $8, you guys get wireless charging. So go to your local Walmart and see if they have any on sale in the clearance section. So $8 wireless charging in your 10 year old car. That's pretty cool. So uh, hopefully you guys found this helpful and we'll see you in the next video. All of the night, I hear them outside. Call them for me, yeah. Call them for me when you packed outside, yeah. Yeah. Back out, sex. I take no